everybody knows it has to be like, you know, it, it cannot be straightforward. But when you have to take a turn, sometimes it's very scary because you feel like, what if it's a wrong decision? Hello, my loves. Welcome back to the Lavender Lifestyle Podcast. It's Eileen. Today, we have the third episode in our community series where we'll be sharing stories from real Lavi loves on their journeys to creating their dream life. Today, we'll talk about figuring out your life purpose and healing all the layers within from the perspective of ancient Chinese teachings. Our guest today is Sylvie Tran. From marketing manager to event planner to book writer, Sylvie finally found her calling, a healing practitioner a journey of true self-love and love for your community of destiny while walking the path of your soul. Sylvie lives in Taiwan and uses ancient Chinese philosophy and modern ways to help herself and other people around her. A quick reminder that we just launched a new community program called the Dream Life Club, where we'll be doing monthly live events, helping you stay accountable to your goals and fostering a thriving community of people working towards creating their dream life. To learn more, you can go to lavendere.com slash DLC for Dream Life Club. So again, lavendere.com slash DLC. All right, here is Sylvie Tran. Hello, Sylvie. Welcome to the podcast. How are you feeling today? Hi, I'm super excited. It's 7 3 in the morning, and that's the best way to start your day, I think. <laughs> I love that you're so awake already. You have such good energy in the morning. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I think it's because, like, usually I have to wake up pretty early. So uh, it's like, you know, today was another good way, you know, a different mm-hmm. way, a more yeah. exciting way. To wake up early. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So why don't you start off by telling mm-hmm. us your story and what you do? Sure. I'll give you like a little summary version. So I was born in France. Uh, wow. And then, yeah, I grew up there like pretty much my whole life. But I also lived in different countries because my parents were moving around a lot. And uh, and then when I was young, I wanted to be a writer. And my parents were like, no way, <laughs> you're not going to be a writer. Um, because I think they were scared uh, about like, you know, that path. Sometimes like often the artistic path uh, is scary for um, a lot of parents. Uh, and then like, so I... I decided to be like a good girl and follow another path. And I just used a business school, a usual business school. And uh, thanks to that, like I worked in a lot of different companies, but uh, I actually didn't enjoy it very much. And uh, just, um, just, but the thing is like at the time, I didn't really listen um, to that part of me. And then I just kept going and kept going until I was sent to Taiwan um, for another job, like a marketing job. And, uh, and then when I was here, I just thought like, okay, this is it. Uh, I'm done with that. But I was mm-hmm. in another country. I didn't have my family here. And not really a lot of friends, actually, uh, at first. Um, it was actually pretty hard to make friends as a growing adult, like, you know, not for school, uh, in another country. And, um, and then from then, like, I decided to do, like, to try many, many, many things. Uh, like, I started, uh, I was very inspired by Humans of New York. Uh, I don't know if you, yeah. uh, I'm sure yeah, <laughs> you know it. Uh, and then they did the version of Taiwan. I did Humans wow. of Taiwan. Uh, <gasps> oh, cool. Here. Yeah, that was really, really cool. So connecting with people, like, realize how much I really liked it. And uh, and then actually, it went slightly viral here. And people started to contact me and saying like, oh, can we interview you? Like, you know, in magazines and stuff like that. And um, and then like, I even got asked, you know, to do like a, a TEDx uh, to nice. hear. And at that moment, I got really scared <laughs> and I stopped everything. And, uh, and everybody was like, why are you stopping? Um, it's so good. You're doing so well. And, and, uh, and I think I was just overwhelmed by fear. Uh, and also I think I was really tired because, um, what was mine at first felt like mine it wasn't really mine. You're, I mean, you're sharing, but, but then there were like a lot of expectations behind. Uh, and I suddenly like became like, um, sort of paralyzed mm-hmm. and I do that as a, um, a failure for a long time because I tried to go back to it because a lot of people were asking, Oh, when are you coming back? And everything. I did a lot of breaks and I somehow couldn't get back to it. 
I just couldn't. I really tried. And, and I thought, but it's so close to something I like. Um, and then after that, so I decided to actually try to write. Um, and then so I did writing and then I tried to write many, many things and it didn't work. And then one summer in Paris, back in Paris, um, I don't know, I think I got hit by an inspiration. And then I wrote like a short novel and then it got published after in Switzerland. Oh my gosh. Like, That's so cool. I'm so happy and everything. So excited. And then after I tried to write again and I couldn't write anymore. <laughs> And Wait, what was, was this book about? It was a um, novel, like a fiction? It was like, yeah, like a, a fantasy fiction, oh. a short story. Uh, the story of um, a wind, uh, a wind. Like, um, so it was a wind who wanted to, so they were like, oh, um, I forgot how you say that. Like, no, they didn't have like body form, uh, like like just transparent. And, um, and then the wind really wanted to do something with, their life, I'm going to say they, I think they, I didn't really have gender in there uh, mm -hmm. with their life. Uh, and uh, they wanted to become somebody really big. Uh, but the community of Wind, um, his family and their family and everything were saying, uh, no, you have your path to walk and then you just have to do this. And if you do that, you're going to keep like, you know, um, the balance in the community because everybody has a part to do. Um But then that wind uh, had like, I think a Swedish name or a uh, no Norwegian name, uh, Tully, uh, just couldn't stand like how boring uh, their life were. And then suddenly like one day um, there was volcano who exploded and uh, I think the air became more toxic. And then the community of wind had to like move away from where they were because it was like spreading everywhere like a virus a little bit. So they had to cross the, the sea and then crossing the sea when the wind meets the sea, usually it becomes a sort of like um, typhoon tornado. Mm. So uh, it was really like, uh, I know it sounds a little bit abstract here, but, but no, I like it. That, yeah, yeah. But by doing that, they became like a sort of tornado, a typhoon um, uh, style. And uh, they they were like hitting the, the coast like um, of where people, human beings were living. And Tully was saying, but we cannot, like, we shouldn't hurt them. We shouldn't hurt them. So he let go of the, um, uh, because like for them, like doing a tornado meant like all the winds were holding each other uh, to not be separated. Uh, and then he let go and were separated um, from uh, from his family. Uh, and then um, I'm, I'm really literally telling the whole story. <laughs> well, what like, happens to him in the end? <laughs> Yeah, in the end, like, uh, so because he was, uh, by himself, uh, he, like, you know, like, he was, like, hitting the coast, but even the, a big wind by itself would, like, you know, hit the coast pretty, like, uh, strongly. Um, he saw that, like, all people there were, like, very scared, and he tried to avoid the people, uh, but by avoiding the people, he was hitting the houses, and actually, you know, this is how I visualize on the other side, if it was a, conscious wind who would be hitting trying not to hit people they would hit uh, the houses that's how like you know maybe wow. uh, um how do you say that like a uh, natural catastrophe would happen um mm -hmm. and then like but by because he was a truly want he truly wanted to help people he ended up like you know um make miracles happen mm. uh sort of like you know avoiding and people were saying this is so weird it's You know, it was like hitting everything, but not the people and everything like that. And uh, and from that day, people um, did like a sort of commemoration for him. Um, but because he was invisible, nobody knew his real name. Uh, and then like he became sort of like a hero, uh, something like that. The unseen hero. Uh, and then he was really happy uh, to to have done like a, accomplish something big uh, because that's what he wanted. Uh But then he wanted to go back to his family because uh, I guess maybe the path, you know, like just walking that path by himself made him feel like actually his community is um, also really important and just wanting to be a hero um, maybe didn't really... Um, was fulfilling and what wasn't very fulfilling enough. Uh, wow. so he went to try to look back and look for his family around the world. <laughs> Something Amazing. like that. <laughs> no, I like, really I like it. Messy. <laughs> I didn't expect to uh, share it, but it was really messy. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. I can see the similarities to how you live your life, right? 
Hi, my loves. I just want to take a quick break to let you know about the new Dream Life Club, our new membership program featuring monthly live events and workshops for personal growth and wellness, goals, accountability, masterminds, and community, a powerful resource for your dream life journey. The Dream Life Club is a space to connect, learn, and grow together and find more support and empowerment as you go after the life you want. If you've been searching for a positive, supportive community or a way to commit more consistently lead to your personal growth and healing journey, this is for you. Learn more and join now at lavendaire.com slash DLC. That's lavendaire.com slash DLC. I'm so excited to have you. Um, okay, so you were telling about your, let's not get sidetracked too hard with the story. So going back to you ended up writing this book, it got published, and then you couldn't write anymore. And then what happened? And then, like, I, I was really wondering, like, you know, what was going on? Because every time I was, like, you know, making something happen, then after, it was just, like, I was stuck. And uh, uh, back then, I was, like, um, teaching French uh, in a school. And one of my colleagues um, was talking about, like, you know, meditation and things like that. And I was saying, oh, I want to try. I really suck at meditating. So please uh, help me. And then I went to her studio and then she introduced me to what she was doing. And the first thing that we did was like a short meditation and then a knife massage. I don't know if you've ever tried that, a knife massage. Uh, it's actually pretty, um, it's a traditional massage, I would say, with two knives, uh, like sort of like um, when you say like that, it sounds creepy, but butcher knives. Right. It's not too sharp. It, yeah, I, I think. Exactly. I yeah, yeah. And then she told me like, oh, you want to try that? And I felt like so good, so different. And I was like, what was that? And then like she explained to me a little bit like uh, in their um, association organization, they had like different tools for different um, sort of challenges in life. And uh, and then like I decided to just start meditating and like going to some classes and things like that. Uh, and then by doing that, like, you know, they, um, it's like you're an onion and they're like peeling a little bit all the layers around you, like, uh, all the, each, um, through challenges, like, you know, each pain or like, you know, uh, things you have to go through by, um, going there. I did that a little bit. And then after that, they told me that, uh, uh, on my path, it would be really good if I become a practitioner. Uh, so at first I was a little bit like, you know, um, ah, no, I don't really want to, that's not really what I want to do. I want to be a writer. And then, uh, it was like a little bit of, a, uh, how do you say that? Like questioning more myself, like, because you know, sometimes when you're so, um, stuck on to doing something, you think like you have to do it. And there's a lot of this mindset that if you don't do it, then it's never going to happen. You should never give up. Maybe a lot that sentence that came back, never give up, never give up. And for me, like, you know, going another road one more time felt like I was giving up. Yeah. And uh, that was, I think, the part where, like, when do you decide that it's enough is enough? You know, a little bit um, that part. And um, and then I thought, like, okay, I'll give it a shot. And, uh, and then so I started, like, you know, participating to some activities and then, like, and they, for me, the tools that I have is called Fen Duo Jing Yao which is fight and side healing. And it's more about the heart healing. Uh, and, um, and then like by actually doing that, by healing, like, you know, doing the healings, it actually helped me a lot to do my own healing. I think you understand that very well because you talk to so many people also on your journey, you know, uh, you understand a lot of things about yourself. And actually by doing that, I feel like now maybe I could start writing again. It's like, you know, it was blocked and then, it's okay, you know, it's like you have to trust that you're going to come back to that road, that it's okay to just like go aside like a little bit. And everybody knows it has to be like, you know, it, it cannot be straightforward. But when you have to take a turn, sometimes it's very scary because you feel like, what if it's a wrong decision, you know? Yeah, but you're meant to, you're meant to go that way because it helps you with where you're meant to go. Tell us more about the type of healing that you do. Like, can you explain some exercises or, or things that you do? Sure. Uh, so as a, a base, 
uh, basics base uh, we we do usually we have uh, in the morning often as a practitioner and then just anybody who uh, follows like members uh, we start with uh, something called a uh, qigong qigong bang a uh, qigong wands and it's a little bit of a mix of yoga and um, tai chi a uh, qigong so we use like two sticks and then we do like different exercises like to clean the qi around you that's what you do ah, in the morning I so see. and uh, Often, like when you do qigong, you can feel. Actually, have you tried qigong yeah, and tai chi? I have. Yeah. Yeah. And did you feel like sometimes, like uh, when you do it, like you feel a little bit like the energy around you uh, moving a little bit, yes. or like you know your body calmer? And then yeah. with the sticks, um, usually, um, I would say it helps um, to do it faster. Mm. Um, because it helps you like as the six are energized so it helps you to clean like you know like uh, the energy around yeah, so is it yeah. also similar to tai chi where there's movements where exactly, you clear the energy yeah. okay okay yeah, got it yeah yeah, yeah you do it like that and it's like a little bit like a tool to help you because sometimes what's it made uh, of the stick uh it's like a special wood a special like a tree wood and then they uh energize it and uh it's like you know like sometimes when you do it just by yourself it's a little bit can be hard at first and that you have like a, a middle ground like you know helping you to the uh, okay and then we have like different classes and movements um to help you do depending on what you need depending on how you need to ground yourself and that's usually what we do uh at first and then um and then after we have like uh different like um healings depending on what you need uh, the heart one for example or uh, the light one, uh, which is like uh, called Guang Liao, which is more related to your soul. Because um, everybody doesn't like uh, one healing won't necessarily work for one person because everybody's needs and challenges are very, very different. Um, and then so we first assess what they need. Uh, and then everybody can try anything, of course. Uh, we assess what they need. Usually you need a little bit of some everything, but maybe on your path there is one thing you need the most first and we work on that uh so the healing of the soul or the knife massage uh i learned that it was mostly to um mutualize your karma uh so we call it like you know like um everything that uh, depend i know everybody not everybody believes in that uh but uh, depending on maybe how long you've lived uh, how many times you've lived uh we consider that you might have accumulated a lot of things uh on your shoulder from um, lives to lives uh mm -hmm. and then doing that can help like you know smooth things around uh so there are like the main three healings that uh we do uh uh, in our um, organization association yeah right and and just to be clear is there a name for this type of organization or healing that you do and then what's it called the practice is called Tao Tong. Uh, Tao Tao Tong. Tong. Okay. Yeah, Tao Tong is like you know uh, the aim is a little bit like um, to uh, find your path uh, we uh, consider that you know like everybody has a sort of like uh, a sort of like it's a big word so it can be a little bit scary but maybe like a purpose a destiny uh related to their soul and then one related to their um ancestors and we help them like you know to take to find that path because when you walk that path it feels really like you're doing it right it really feels like that and um but that path is never usually something you know far from what makes you feel good we're not gonna like you know suddenly ask you oh can you become like a, a fireman or i mean when you're not doing that at all is like, you know, is like trying to find out what is your, what does your soul want? So we clean, clean, clean. And what do you have to do related to your ancestors and family? Because you come from them. Yeah. Yeah. This makes me interested in your story because since you discovered this, like what have you found out about yourself and your purpose? <laughs> uh, that's a very good question. <laughs> uh, to me, like, uh, I think, um, actually, I don't know if you felt like that, like, because you're somebody who, like, creates a lot to help, to help yourself and to help people, uh, you know, by extension. I've always thought, like, oh, I really want to, like, you know, help people and everything like that. And then, like, because I was, like, so far from what I was doing by doing, like, you know, a business and things like that, I kind of forgot about it. And, uh, um, from what I said, and I'm actually still on the journey, uh, is related to, um, art. Uh, and healing at the same time but it's funny because when they told me that at first I said like oh art 
Oh, you know, not really, but thank you. <laughs> I don't know why like, you've been doing creative yeah, things, though. It, it's yeah. true, but somehow it felt like you know, and there was still this like thing in me, like, ah, oh, you know, art is too hard, too far from me, you know, like living off of it, you know, like it's too hard, too far from me. Uh, but actually, I can see it now. Uh, but because art, I think it was my, I think it was my definition of art that was a little bit, um, um, biased, you know, like I think art is like, it can be anything, it can be just cooking, mm -hmm. uh, not just it yeah, cooking, right. you know, like uh, drawing or, uh, yoga, like, you know, it's a lot of different form. Um, and, uh, for me, it's like walking that path, like, um, doing a sort of art, uh, that will like help uh, a lot of people. And then healing right now, like doing all the tools is like one step. Uh, when, when I understood that, because at first I thought it was like a little bit the end goal, like, you know, mm -hmm. oh, okay. Uh, I'm going to become a healing practitioner. This is the end goal. Then no, it's not the end goal. And I thought it was really interesting. Like, oh, what's there behind? And every step, there is something behind. So I would tell oh. you right now what's this. And there is much more behind. So that's very exciting. Um, and I'm still discovering it. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Yeah. So, so you've basically embraced, like you're already healing practitioner, but you're embracing that art is a part of your purpose, but, you, but you're still figuring it out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And I think like what I also figured out is, um, I guess, um, more related to the family, uh, to my parents mostly, uh, where, um, actually I remember I talk about that because I also remember there was one of the video that you did that, uh, I think, um, touch me the most. Like we know sometimes when you mention your parents, when you're, it was like, you, I know you did it several times, but, uh, especially when you were talking about your parents and like how the relationship was not necessarily very, um, smooth, uh, especially with your dad. Uh, like for me, it was, um, very, very similar, very similar. Uh, and, um, I think it was this, uh, wanting to understand why did it have to be so complicated, you know? Why did it have to be like that? And uh, initially, like, uh, for me, it was a little bit, a lot of, like, you know, um, anger and frustration and um, about what was going on. And even, like, a little bit of, like, blaming. Uh, and then slowly, you know, with the healing, with understanding myself, um it wasn't that anymore, I think. It was more like understanding things from their perspective and uh, understanding like what they were going through. And uh, there's this one thing that I really like actually about um, Tao Tong is that they say that, you know, when you change yourself, uh, when you truly heal and change yourself, it actually affects your community of destiny. Uh, and the first in lines are your parents. And uh, at the beginning, I mean, for my whole life, pretty much, our relationship um, was really hard, uh, uh, yeah. very complicated, not understanding each other, like no matter if it's because of like, you know, cultural gap or generation or different struggles. But when I became calmer, actually they became much calmer too. Yeah. Yeah. I see that too. Yeah. That, that was like, really, do you see that with your parents? Yeah. Yeah. If you shift your energy, instead of being like arguing and whatever, if you shift to like gratitude or calm or understanding or even forgiveness in the end like it, it it's contagious like they their energy shifts as well it's interesting and then it's like you know and it can become a bigger and bigger scale like in here we talk about first you and then your family and then the society and then uh the country you know and uh and i love that i love that you know it can be you starting here and then like shifting everything around the gen previous generation and the upcoming one. So, tell me more about your healing journey with healing that difficult relationship with your your dad or or anything else. Because you mentioned how healing is like layers, right? You're uncovering the layers and you're healing it. So, maybe think of our listener who may be may still be feeling. Maybe they have a yeah. Everybody has difficulties in their life, right? Or traumas or emotions that they want to heal from. So. Yeah, talk about your journey and, and how you healed. First layer, I would say that, you know, often sometimes we want to dive deep 
uh, immediately. Uh, like, okay, um, the hardest part I think uh, in healing is finding the roots of like uh, why things are happening. You know, why is it like that? And then sometimes we can think it's the roots, but then actually behind there is something else, like the onion we talked about, right? Mm -hmm. And usually, like first, we would start. Uh, we actually have something called like um, like codes, like this is cool codes of wisdom that we use to help us to do like you know step by step like how we should like heal. And the first um, part usually it's uh, the wisdom part, uh, like the mindset uh, we can call like you know, and it's all of that part, the mindset, like you know, how does it work? Actually, I even have it like next to me here the um, the code. That Uh, okay. Can I show it to you? Yeah. Is it okay? Yeah. It feels like it's a method because it helps you a little bit, like, you know, to know where you're going. But it's like, you know, five different ways, uh, uh, five steps. Uh, mm. First, you start with the wisdom. Uh, the wisdom, like, you know, trying to a little bit understand more uh, your mindset, you know, like how, what are the triggers and everything like that. Uh, and for me, I think I thought I was somebody who was very open minded. Uh, and I think I was, I guess, you know, uh, but because sometimes when you think you're open-minded, uh, sometimes it's hard to see the other way, you know, the other perspective when, um, I know it's going to sound weird what I'm saying, but you know, when you think you're a good person, uh, sometimes like, you know, you, um, it's hard to see the other way. I don't know if I'm very mm -hmm. clear what I'm saying. I think I understand. Yeah. Uh, and then like, uh, so first, like, you know, like, uh, the wisdom and then after you take care of your health, like, you know, what's going on with your health, like, you know, what, what do you need to adjust? Uh, and then after you can take care, uh, take the part, uh, take care of the money. And then for me, I think my healing journey was a lot, like, I thought my heart was open. Uh, but I think it wasn't open that much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and it was really hard for me to admit that because maybe because I was always trying my best. Uh, in everything I was doing. And then I was always trying not to complain too much, you know, to do what's right. Um, I thought like, uh, I don't understand why, you know, I have to suffer, quote unquote, suffer so much, you know, and uh, what did I do wrong? Like, you know, and it was like understanding that uh, what is right or like, you know, what is wrong is beyond my conception of things. Um Okay, I'm going like really, really <laughs> like, you know, sorry, because it's not very clear when I say it like that. But it was like a lot like about opening my heart, honestly. Right, uh, right. To understand beyond, like, you know, a little bit like understanding what true love is. Like, you know, even if somebody made me suffer, like maybe my parents, uh, can I still truly love them, you know? And it was all that journey of like understanding what it means to truly love somebody or to truly love myself, like beyond, like, you know, uh, despite everything that you feel is wrong, you know, there, there was like really a chunk about that, uh, despite all the criticism and everything, but finding the balance of like, I love myself. I know this is wrong. I'm going to try to improve it, but I'm not going to criticize it. Yeah. Like when you grow up with difficult parents, there's levels of resentment in your heart. There's levels of like, oh, either you think you're the victim or you, you're blaming them for making you suffer in a certain way. And you might think that you're a good person and your heart's open, but you're, you still have these little beliefs that you hold inside and you don't realize it's a belief that's, that's, It doesn't have to be a belief, right? You, you don't realize it until, I guess you go about life and you start to uncover the layers. Um, I think healing is, is interesting because there are points in my life where I felt like, oh, I already healed from that. And then, and then I find there's more, there's more, there's more triggers or there's more beliefs that I have to let go of. Exactly. This is exactly that. Like one step, one step. And then like, you know, like for example, for now, my relationships with my parents are very smooth. But then sometimes like they might get angry about something. And then in me, like sometimes I'm still a little bit sensitive about it. You know what I mean? And I thought like, I thought like I was done with that, you know, but I guess it's just like, it's, I think it's the whole life, you know, your whole life you do that. And accepting that um, practicing, not really practicing, just living your whole life means um, taking on like every challenge coming your way. But just almost with gratitude, mm -hmm. I think helps to change a lot how you see things. Like, you know what I mean? Like, just like, okay. Like, for example, like maybe I was like challenged, I was challenged by a lot of things. 
And then instead of like being angry about it, which is a normal feeling too, like taking maybe the time to feel the emotion, but then finding the way to tweak and be grateful about it. And I think that's, that can sound very controversial, um, but being able to be grateful for a problem can really switch a lot of things. Um, how you know your mindset and how you, the energy in your body. Yes. Because instead of you're going from suffering to like curiosity, like, hmm, this is a problem, it's a challenge, but how, like, what good can come out of this, right? I'm grateful. I'm grateful it's teaching me to be stronger or it's teaching me how to navigate this problem. And there's always, it's, it's a perspective thing. You can always shift your perspective. Yeah, yeah, totally. And I think what you said is really good because it's like, like from resentment to maybe if it's too hard to be grateful, because sometimes it can be really hard, then curiosity, you know, it's the neutral zone. I feel like it's really good, the neutral zone. Right. Like maybe the next time you're encountering something difficult, instead of feeling angry and resentful, it's like, like the curiosity of like, what is the universe trying to teach me? <laughs> what is how is this, you know, how is this taking me to the better version of myself? Right? Yeah, yeah. Because if it's too hard, because sometimes we, we... Yeah, you don't have to be doing... grateful. It, it is yeah. hard to be grateful sometimes. Exactly. But it can, yeah, yeah. you can start asking the questions like, what does this mm. mean? How should I grow from this? Yeah. And uh, there's this thing like, you know, what uh, we say it like that and it might sound, you know, like, but it's not. It's like, what am I quote unquote lacking of? And then how can I like, you know, um, feel in like, you know, make up for that mm -hmm. lack, you know, mm -hmm. do I need somebody to help me or is it like something on my own? Um, cause sometimes we do need people like, you know, to help us to adjust a little bit to yeah. see things from a, another perspective. Yeah. So my next question is since you've started to study like all this ancient Chinese philosophy and healing, what is something that you've learned that you wish everyone knew? Something you're like, oh my gosh, no, like people don't know about this. I wish I could tell everybody. I think I mentioned it a little bit at first. So, and maybe it's something that you can find. I, I found that you like, you know, like different practices in the end, the core message uh, are often like, you know, uh, is often the same. Um, but we say here that uh, when you are uh, struggling, um, when you're str struggling, there are like uh, three different possibilities. Uh, the first possibility is that uh, you're, when you feel like, you know, you're trying to think, but it's really hard and you cannot think, uh, is that your energy uh, is blocked by the universe. So we have mm -hmm. like, you know, it can be either blocked by the universe, either blocked by the earth, which is related to ancestors, either blocked by your health, which is more related to your lifestyle. Uh, and then the one like, you know, related to um, the universe is like, that means you're not really doing what your soul wants. If you're not doing what your soul wants, often you will feel like things are foggy. You can't really think, you know what I mean? Uh, and the, the energy is blocked by the universe. We're going to say that. Uh, and then after we consider, and I think, I think it was related a lot to Ch Chinese culture, uh, ancient Chinese culture is the place of your ancestors. How much like, you know, uh, we consider that we carry what they started and then like, you know, we carry and we sort of have to keep going what they did or what they wanted to do. Yeah. Okay. And that's related to the earth. So it's like a sort of contract with the universe, with your soul, and a contract with uh, your ancestors, the earth, because you're made of like, you know, flesh and like, you know, all of that. And if you're not doing uh, that, um, I know it sounds, uh, if you're like, you know, walking that, which would make you feel really great, uh, then it will affect your luck, uh, your luck, uh, and also a little bit your health too. Because you're like, you know, their their genes or pass on to you, uh, and it's related to them. So, like maybe if you have a health problem, it can be related to that. And then the last part is like uh, the health again, but in a different way, blocked by uh, the human us. Uh, it's more related to what we see, you know, like uh, every day. It's more like maybe lifestyle and things like that. So this is what we call like a visible problem because uh, uh, in our practice, we have like two things, visible problem and invisible problem. And for visible problem, visible solutions and invisible problem, invisible solutions. So oh, we try to cate yeah, categorize things to see what okay. do you need? Like, you know, for example, if you have like you hurt your ankle, 
uh, it won't be necessary like, you know, for healing with stones <laughs> that you will heal that, you know, you need to right. go to the doctor, you know? Uh, uh, okay. Yeah. But then like, maybe if it's something related like to your heart or your soul, then maybe going to the doctor won't be enough. And right. then you will need like tools, like, you know, and I think just that concept, very simple yeah. idea will like make you feel like, oh, then what is my problem right now? Right. Is it visible or invisible? And then knowing that will help you to figure things out much faster. Wow. I, I really like that concept. Okay. So visible problems, visible solution, invisible problem, invisible solution. And then going back, I have a question about, I mean, the first two were like universe. And then the second one was your an the earth, which is your ancestors. So how, I mean, how do you know what, for example, how do you know what your ancestors want? <laughs> what's the path they want for you how would you know <laughs> that's a really good question that's the whole journey uh that's the whole journey of like you know when i was saying like you know peeling your layers a little bit like you do your life of course you keep going with what you have to do and you try to listen a little bit uh to to be in tune a little bit to what you're doing uh if you feel like you're healthy or not uh, and then after what we do here, you, we use a tool called eating. Have you heard about it? Like, you know, it's the... Isn't that the book of like the different patterns? Ah, uh, there is the book of eating. Oh, that's yeah, different. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's... Uh, that's different. It's, the, it, it, the concept is a little bit similar. We have okay. something called Xian Qian Yijing. And then uh, uh, this will see the problem exactly. We have two oh. things like Xian Tian Tarot Card, which is more about the, the heart. And okay. Xian Tian Yijing, which is more about like breaking through. Uh, the root so what what is the I Ching that you're talking about? Uh, like, and the what I Ching does it look is a, like? Uh, it's like a, a pentagram. Is it the name okay. of the, this? You know I think I, mean? I have like seen a, it. Yes, uh, the Shenzhen I Ching we call it, and that will help you um, a little bit to pinpoint uh, which way you should go. It's never gonna tell you this is what your ancestors want. Go now. You know what I mean? Because it's a journey. It's about you, like, you know, opening and understanding yourself. And the more, like, you know, peel that layer, the more you will feel in tune and understand better. Like, for example, for me, it's related to uh, Liao Yu, to healing. Uh, but it's not necessarily exactly clear. Exactly, exactly. And that's really okay. How does a person start to find the, these clues of what direction that is? Because you mentioned the diagram, but for our listeners who want to look it up, or for example... How would you start to find that information? Uh, that's a really hard one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's a really hard one. Uh, like for that, um, it, some people, they're born and naturally do it. Right, right. Uh, so they naturally do it. And sometimes you don't even know you're doing it, but you do yeah. it already. Uh, right. And then when you don't know uh, you're doing it, either uh, you can ask, you know, like it can be asked, uh, which path? should I take? Where should I go? You know, but often I would say that, uh, it's very much like if you feel like you're in tune or not, you know, and that's why I'm saying like, it looks a little bit like other practices. Like if you feel like, you know, uh, uh, if you're healthy, that's really one big indicator. How is your health? You know, like, uh, because it's related to the most likely either your lifestyle. And if not, if your lifestyle is great, then most likely your ancestors. I think it's better mm. to do it by that. If you feel like your lifestyle is not really good and your health is not really good, then you'll try to adjust there first, you know, like routines and things like that. And then if you feel like, oh, I'm doing everything. I'm like, you know, like I, I work out every day, I meditate, but why am I still so tired? You know, why do I still feel like, you know, why do I always have these allergies or like, you know, I'm always like, getting sick often but i'm trying my best i eat healthy then you go to the next level i you know see. and then here like you know here you you might need somebody uh to at least help you a little bit to uh adjust and guide a little bit yeah because this is more like invisible part we had the visible part that everybody can do um, that we consider is 70% of our life and the 30% is invisible. So here where you need a little bit of guidance and then after you can be on your own, but sometimes just a little bit of guidance. Yeah. This brought so much, like, I guess, insight because there's a lot of people I know, and I'm sure you or listeners know that have these like, uh, unexplained, unhealthy things like the allergies or like the 
migraines maybe, or, you know, things like that, that aren't exactly visible and can't be treated easily. And so it must mean there's something, there's a deeper layer that they're not following. So very interesting. But mm-hmm. very important to first, like, you know, before like assessing that it's invisible, like really looking honestly uh, at the lifestyle that we have. Because sometimes it's really just suggesting that there's always an invisible part, always. Like it can be huge because there's a lot to do or it can be something small. So everybody is different. Everybody's uh, journey right. is different. But you mentioned if you're doing the right thing, it'll, like, I think I understand that feeling. Like you'll feel aligned. Like you know you're meant to be doing this thing. And you also mentioned that you get more luck. Exactly. Because it changes. You feel like things are smoother. Like, you know, oh, this will happen. This Oh, wow, this is happening. Oh, wow, this is happening. And that's a good way to see if you're aligned or not. Like a little bit the luck, the opportunities, like, you know, that you have or not. Definitely one good way to assess. I love that. And then also in in spirituality, the concept of like synchronicity, if you start seeing like coincidences or like numbers and like repeating numbers and things like that, then it's a sign that you're on the right path. Yeah, exactly. Really like, you know, just like assessing, not obsessing with it too much because after it can become like, you know, unhealthy, but just assessing feeling like, oh, this is going smooth. Oh, wow. Like, you know, like uh, then you can, you can see that uh, you're on the right path. Awesome. Okay. So Sylvie, I want to know about your lifestyle. So what do you do in your life to make sure that you're staying healthy and staying aligned to this, I guess, the, the purpose or the way? My lifestyle, I'd say that um, I... Wake up in the morning at 6.05. <laughs> okay, very specific. Uh, 6.05, because we say here that 6.05 is the, a great time to wake up if you want to improve your health. The energy for health is good at 6.05. Wow. So we have different hours for different Why energy. Why only 6.05? Uh, uh, it's the energy like of the, um, how do you say that? Like, I guess of the planet. Like I see. at this time, it's open if you do like things for your health at this time. Uh-huh. then it might help you better. Okay. 505, we consider that it's like for wisdom, uh, oh. which is more like spirituality. Yeah. Ah. And then 705, uh, it's more like um, career-wise, like maybe uh, planning, uh, money, things like that. So different hours, different energy. So yeah, for me, it's like really 605 because it's my health. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, and then, ah, ancestors. I'm just kidding. I don't know what to say. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, sorry. Uh, six or five. And then I usually will do like um, the Qing Kong Wands, just six. And then like I will meditate with different frames that I have, depending on the energy I need. And I will open my um, tarot cards like 100 times. Because when we say you open it 100 times, is to open your heart. Uh, yeah, you open, when we open our tarot, we open our heart at the same time. So we do it like 100 times. And, and then, when you're talking about tarot, is it the tar- the traditional, the tarot that everyone knows, or is it a different type of tarot? It's different. Yeah. It's called a uh, Xintian tarot, which is like, Xintian is like a little bit the energy of the, the, the universe. And there's no word on it. I think some people like they mentioned that it might look like oracles. I'm not really sure. Cause I'm, I'm not familiar with oracles. Uh, and then you have like a, a brush like this, uh, and then you use it to connect your energy. Like it, it descends, like if you want, we can try later actually. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, it descends and then like, uh, and then the information comes to you, uh, like this. So there is no, uh, there's no, like, uh, how do you say that? There's no word on it. Like the, the, the cards are like, um, it's like abstract a little bit. Okay. Okay. But they each have like a symbol and a meaning. That's the part is like the, the meaning depends on the, the question and everything. Like the information descent is very, like very unique, I find actually. Yeah. It's not like this card means this or this card means that. It depends on like how the information descends. Uh, I into see. You. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, <laughs> but sometimes you can see the same card and maybe by doing it more and more, you can feel like, oh, there is a little bit that energy. There is a little bit of energy in uh, the like type of energy, but it doesn't have like a specific uh, meaning. 
No, it's okay. I, I just side note, I love that you're sharing this because it's the first time I've heard of this type of cards. And I, I think in Western mainstream media or just Western social media, like we only hear about the Western stuff, like the tarot cards, but we like all of this, like Chinese or Eastern stuff, it's still so unknown and not shared. So I, yeah, to the listener who's hearing this for the first time, it might seem so wild and different, but it's, I don't know. I just, I appreciate that you're like spreading awareness that there's so much more out there that we've never heard of that exists. All these different tools. That's so true. And I feel like there's so, maybe if you try in many ways, uh, maybe tarot cards and then like, and then maybe somehow you felt like, yeah, but ah, I'm still searching. I'm still searching. Or you've tried many ways. Then maybe there's another way out there that you've never heard about. And we just stay open and then like, you know, like see what's there and you know, what we can hear about and, and then try and give it a shot. Yeah. Uh, okay. So back to your routine. So you do the opening the cards a yeah. hundred yeah. times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then, and then what? <laughs> yeah, how, uh, how long does that take? <laughs> no, it's okay. Actually, it's not that. It, it doesn't take that long. Like I did okay. just before meeting you. So. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I, I think it just takes like maybe t 15 minutes, something okay. like that. Like, you know, yeah. just, uh, you open, you're grateful for like, you know, you're like, thank you. So it's you. like a meditation that you're doing exactly. with the cards. Ah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then you feel it, you feel a little bit the switch in you. Like, you know, we feel literally like, oh, opening a little bit. Uh, yeah. And then that, like, I don't have like a very fixed schedule. Uh, so, um, cause I don't work like a nine to six job and I'm very grateful for that. Uh, but some people like it and that's okay too. Uh, usually like I do that. And then after in the morning, uh, I have, uh, I'll take care of my customers actually. Mm -hmm. Uh, my members, I'm going to have like maybe breakfast and things like that. And then after I have, take care of my customers, members, because most of them are actually in the States or Canada. So morning here for me, it's evening for them. So this is when I meet them. Uh, yeah. And then after I have my Taiwanese customers here in the afternoon, and then I have the people from Europe. Wow. <laughs> in the evening. Wait, how, and how did you connect with a global clientele? Of <laughs> I think it's, I don't know, it's being everywhere somehow. I guess Europe mm -hmm. is because like, uh, uh, I'm from France, so yeah. it was like sort of like um, easy. word of mouth, not easy. I guess. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. And I have like uh, I'm not on my own. We are a team. Right. Uh, we're a great team of like you know different uh, nationalities and things like that. So you know, like for example, when you have a customer, maybe maybe you feel like the, this energy doesn't match you, then you will like you know send it to somebody else because mm. we try to like align people with the right person. Uh, so, so there's that, like, you know, like word of mouth and then like, you know, uh, just being everywhere a little bit and, yeah. uh, I don't know, maybe good luck, <laughs> <You know? laughs> uh, maybe good luck too. And then usually I'll be doing that. And then in the evening, I'm going to like spend a bit of time to, uh, uh, meditate on gratitude and repent a bit, like uh, asking for forgiveness of things that maybe, um, and I think that is a very good thing that we could all, you know, if people, they want to try, they can do that before sleeping. Um, you know, like saying sorry about things, different things during the day or things that maybe we have thought we are thinking about. Um, it really helps to release, you know, that pressure that uh, we can feel in us spending a bit of time, a couple of minutes um, to ask for forgiveness or to forgive. Um, so you let go before you end your day. Wanted to ask earlier, but I forgot to, but tell your story about how you discovered Lavender and the role Lavender oh, yeah. played in your life. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, of course. It was so long ago. I was trying to, you know, like I think <laughs> it was back in 2018, I think. Oh, wow. Uh, wow. That's what I was saying. Yeah. I was like, really, really. So you um, were, were you, do, were you writing? Like what point in your journey were you at that uh, time? Let me think. I th 2018, I was definitely, no, I think it was even before, maybe 2017. Uh, no, I'm trying to think about Taiwan because like uh, to take it like, because Taiwan, I arrived in Taiwan in 2014. So for me, it's a good, like, you know, and uh, I think I discovered you just a little bit after, like uh, maybe like, yeah, I think 2017 or something like that. Uh, and I was like still like um, 
even maybe 16. Sorry, I keep changing it's okay. because it's, it's so okay. long ago that uh, like, you know, <laughs> uh, and uh, it was like in my journey, I was like uh, watching and like, you know, trying to figure things out. At all. I think I was like trying to brainwash myself. I call it like that period of I brainwashed myself uh, uh, because I was um, I didn't really like my job and it was really mm-hmm. complicated. I was a lot alone uh, in mm-hmm. this country. Um, and then I was inspired by a lot of things like Humans of New York, like or like a lot of videos. And then I found out like uh, Lavender. I cannot. I think the first thing I saw was it your video of like my 20s. I, I can't remember. I remember specifically that. I went uh, onto your Facebook page and uh, I saw like you did an event. Uh, I think it was your first one where you were launching your journal. Okay. If I did an event, that was 20, end of 2018, I think. And be- launching the 2019 workbook. Uh, maybe. Yeah. I saw, I remember I saw like, uh, I, saw, I saw that and I was like, wow, the energy of like, you know, like, everybody here and I forgot if it was YouTube to that or that to YouTube I, I cannot remember <laughs> it's okay. but just I really felt like you know the just uh yeah just the energy of it and then I started watching a lot of videos and I really loved like your calmness you know like you know you have like this very warm energy like very soft and warm energy because I've tried to listen to a lot of like different YouTubers and I there's a lot of amazing ones and uh, that I found that there were like a lot of people who were like, uh, you no know, very um, high energy, I would say maybe. Yeah. And, uh, and that's really, that's amazing. And maybe for that time, uh, um, I needed like, you know, like soft, like reassuring and soft energy, um, more like calming. Uh, and I think it started there. And then I watched like on and off, like different, like, you know, uh, videos. And actually, it makes me think about a question that I want to ask you. Okay. Uh, go for it. Because I see that you're like, you know, with, uh, see a lot of like flowers, uh, mm. you know, like you take pictures of a lot of flowers. Do you feel connected with flowers somehow or nature somehow? Or do you, it's, uh, yeah, do you feel that? Or like, it, yeah. it's okay. No, I do like flowers. I think it's just something I'm naturally drawn to. It's my aesthetic. And then when I, I mean, everything that Lavender looks like, like the brand is, is my taste. Like I like pastel colors. I like dreamy vibe. I, it fits my personality. I'm more chill. And I remember back when I started my channel, it was hard because everybody, all the famous YouTubers were the high energy, like really fast cuts types of videos. And that was really trendy back then. But I was like, I'm not like them, but I I still have something to share. So I think now, now there's more diversity. There's a lot, there's people doing slow content. There's people doing like exciting stuff, but yeah, I definitely, I, I feel like I, I try to be authentic to who I am online. Yeah. Honestly, like, uh, I mean, one of your latest video, the one where um, maybe later means like one year ago, right? Uh, <laughs> but like, uh, I remember that one specifically again because because when I watched it, I felt like, ooh, oh, same, you know what I mean? Um, it was the one where you feel like you were not motivated anymore, like, you know, and you went on a healing journey too. And I was really interested into that part. Uh, that one, like... Uh, I'm not sure why I suddenly thought about that. My train yeah, I, I went through Where? yeah because I, I I went through burnout in like 2020 mm, 2021, yes, yes. and then I mm. I I started this new healing practice. But yeah, yeah, yeah. and then that, and I found that I, I was feeling like wow, like I felt somehow very close to like you know like that 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 journey. I mean, that's more recently. Uh, before, I think it was like you know I was in a headspace where content help me you know like content <laughs> yeah. i need to eat food for wisdom and thought and heart okay lavender and i really like your aesthetic like really that Thank and not you. just that i think it was mostly it felt like you know like somebody was talking to my heart you know it was like really more like in that sense than um the aesthetic was like a plus you know, it was like the additional, like the the, the, the the icing on the cake. That's what I try to do. <laughs> Thank you. But the content itself, like, you know, the words, the, the the tips and all of that. And then like there was that that video and I felt like somehow like, you know, when I saw that video, I was thinking like, oh, 
one day uh, I will try to interview her somehow. Oh. I really thought that. <laughs> you manifested I was thinking, it. <laughs> <laughs> I was wow. really thinking like I'll talk to her one because I felt like I am sure a lot of people related to that actually. And you, you showcased it like in such a like, you know, genuine way, like such an authentic way that you can just only relate. And that's something I really appreciate uh, in everything you're doing. Uh, just like, you know, really showing, showing the behind the scenes kind of, you know, I know we don't show every behind the scenes, but like that specifically, like, you know, and, uh, and then, yeah, I just uh, thought like, oh, I really would love to talk to her, but we'll see when you become more famous, we'll talk to her, you know, like, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm so happy. Like, I'm, I'm very happy, first of all, to like be able to talk to you and to hear this from you, but also cause I've been doing YouTube for so long. It's nice to, I, I always wonder like, I, like, I, I feel like it's been so many years that the people who watch me, they must be growing. Do they still watch me? Cause they're like, they're in a different stage of life. Right. Cause, and now hearing your story, when you found me versus where you are now, like you've grown so much. And this is the same across the other people that I've talked to, but it's, I'm very grateful that you're still part of the community. Cause I always question like, yeah, it, what, <laughs> whether people stay for a long time and what happens you know, it, it's, it's interesting when you've been doing something for a long time. You're like, are people, yeah, they're, they must be in a different place now. Yeah, definitely. I think if you keep growing, people will keep growing with you. I think people stop watching sometimes when they outgrow somehow, you know what I mean? Like a little bit the content they're watching or the book they're reading or things like that. But when we keep really truly walking on our journey like you're doing, uh, then people follow, you know, naturally because you give them like so much from your heart and like, you know, your wisdom. So that, and I felt like, you know, when uh, maybe, you know, it was like I said, like it was on and off. And then when I rewatched, like I started watching again, uh, I mean, I didn't really track, but when I watch, I felt like, wow, like, you know, again on the same, like, you know, sort of journey. Like, and I, maybe a lot of people felt the same way too after, you know, 20 21 2020 like covid time and things like that like just like you know like oof, relate to that so much like you know like growing together maybe it feels like you know we're growing together i know i like that we are we're all growing together <laughs> okay um the last question i have for you today is um if you were to leave the audience with one message what would that be for me it's always have hope really even like you know like uh in very hard time. Always, always, always have hope. Uh, because no hope, then, then nothing. Uh, because uh, like I, maybe it relates very much to lately what was going on in my life. Like I had like a family member that was diagnosed with cancer, and it was really, really hard. And it was really hard to think. Always have hope during that time. And. Uh, but always have hope because I could see that things are switching, changing a little bit. And that hope will carry with you, like, you know, like, uh, will help you to go through even the tiny thing or the biggest thing. Like, you know, just like waking up uh, or doing great projects. Like, for me, it's like something that really I had to always, always um, remember, even in the darkest time. I, I, it's very, very common. I, I mean, I wanted to come up with something pretty and no, beautiful. No, and that's everything. beautiful. But uh, uh, for me, really, like, you know, just like always have that hope. And there's always like um, a way. And uh, it's okay if you still don't, if you don't see it yet. It doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Um, so trust and then like keep going and keep like, you know, trying to realign and then it will come to you. It will, it will. I really believe that. Amazing. Okay, Sylvie, where can we find you online if we want to connect with you? Ah, yay. Uh, I'm very new, but I have an Instagram and a YouTube page. Uh, same uh, same uh, name as is Sylvie's dot uh, secret garden. I was asking about the flowers because uh, I feel like I'm very connected with like nature and flowers and everything. That's what I was asking you. But yeah, Sylvie's uh, dot a secret garden. And then uh, I started a little bit that journey, um, hopefully to share with more people. Yeah. I'm sure people will have a lot of questions about what you're doing and learn more about what you teach. Yeah. Feel free to DM, ask questions and try. Like, uh, 
the door, uh, the uh, internet door is open. <laughs> <laughs> You're so cute. And, uh, yeah. uh, thank you so much. Uh, I'm really, really grateful, honestly, for your time and then like for everything that you've been doing. Also for the community, uh, just as a parenthesis, I did a little bit of like a session with mm -hmm. some uh, Lavi loves from your Discord. Yeah. Uh, and it was really nice to meet other people uh from this community yeah yeah so thank you so much for everything you're doing really amazing thank you so yeah. much sylvie this was so good i loved yeah. hearing your story and i'm just supporting you <laughs> keep thank going thank you me too me too keep going let's grow together yay thank you <laughs> thank you so much uh,